I'm Lauren Griesmeyer. I'm the Orders and Beaker and Willow PD for Nordic Consulting Partners. Um, I'm here today with Aaron Herzog, Hello. who's one of my Beaker consultants. I'll let Aaron go ahead and tell you a little bit about himself. Sure. Um, I'm, a, like Lauren said, a Beaker consultant for Nordic. I've been in the Beaker world since early 2009. Um, I Worked at Epic on some various projects, implementation, QA, a little bit of development. Um, I've probably worked directly with six customers at this point and advised probably half a dozen more. So this is this is going to be kind of a loaded question since you know we're having this conversation sure. and we work together at a consulting firm. But I'm curious about your opinion of where you get kind of the biggest bang for your buck staffing a consultant sure. that has had multiple implementations under their belt versus staffing with an FTE that's a, a lower bill rate, mm -hmm. if you will. I think it's the experience of seeing what can go wrong and what and what customer with their previous customers have succeeded at. For example, I know customers who have done a tremendous job of both interface and label testing. I also know customers who have struggled with it. So I can, can see the key differences between the two approaches and sort of recommend a specific testing strategy versus another one. Are there particular areas of the actual application or kind of the install itself that would be a good idea to maybe think about looking outside of your organization for. So testing is one thing mm -hmm. that you just mentioned. Um, are there other areas where you just would kind of expect to have an expert, you know, you can sure. bring in for a little bit, do a knowledge transfer and have them exit where that would actually work pretty well. Yep. Some of the um, areas there would be billing, interfaces and printing. Those are a sure. lot of things that will be maintained outside of your your core lab LIS team once you're live. Sure. But having an expert there to sort of guide you through the initial Set build up. process yeah. and then making sure there's a strong um, you know, communication system between the teams that will support it post go live can be really helpful. Okay. What is one of the if you had to pick the main thing that you feel like customers really when they're starting their implementation need to really zone in and ask a lot of questions and really think through what is your main your hot topic that you would pick i'm sure you have a couple yep. but <laughs> and what's your one it actually i'm gonna give you two answers because oh, because it varies by the flavor of the install okay if it's an enterprise installation it tends to be Making me pick one is tough. I know, it's like picking your children. I would say it's your, it's it ends up being interfaces. Just a lot of... Why is that? It's beaker, usually interfaces, their instruments through a middleware. Mm -hmm. So if the customer isn't currently live with, a, with their LIS to a middleware to the instruments, you sort of need to get someone on the team who can become an expert on three things all at once. Sure. Um, for an add-on install, I think it is appropriately engaging the other Epic teams that are live to modify existing workflows to work better with Beaker. A lot of people think add-on, we're installing one application, the other applications won't have any uptick in work. So, and they do to make the workflows you know, work optimally with the new system. What's the strategy that you've seen work particularly well to get that engagement to happen? I don't think it's necessary. Well, just as early as possible. Like sure. a, a lot of... Um, so like the, having the, other teams attend validation sessions? Yeah. Are you... What the, level the, of... The mistake customers I think can make is not really realizing what the pain points are until like integrated testing. Because gotcha. that's the first time they will have brought in the other teams to do any comprehensive look at the workflow. Okay. I think inviting them to, you know, validation, doing an initial small um, build of your clinical content so you can run, you know, one or two tests from registration to result reporting is a great way to handle some initial application testing. Okay. Because you'll have this huge volume of clinical content build. You know, you need to build a, a thousand to two thousand test or number test catalog 
but you can really test a complete workflow with you know one or two tests. Okay. So AP tends to be an add-on of an add-on. It does. At least a lot of customers tend to do AP as an add-on of an add-on just because it was a little bit less mature yep. than CP. It's it's kind of come a long yeah, way in the last couple versions. A few releases less refinement. Yeah. Yep. Um, so since it is an add-on of an add-on, do you have different considerations as far as pain points and needing to get involvement from other teams, or are they the same considerations, just a different different set of orders? It. And billing. I, again, it's going to be a little bit of both. With AP, the billing tends to be more complicated, so okay. you need to pull in your billing folks um, sooner. You know, registration front end processes aren't vastly different. One of the major integration features of having Beaker AP is your integration with your OR workflows, mm -hmm. where you can take surgery specimens directly into Beaker AP. Sure. So getting you know on board with your op time and anesthesia teams right away um, to make sure that integration is functioning well. Is there another piece of that question I didn't answer? Okay. I thought I lost a piece there, but I guess not. <laughs> 